this week's nature news. You can help the Amazon rainforest and all the animals and indigenous people that live there right now by just signing this petition. Researchers shine a new light on how evolution works and what drives it. What was the purpose of the giant sail on the back of the legendary Spinosaurus? And one of the most epic, astonishing nature documentaries, six years in the making, is finally here. Learn and enjoy. Hey mammals, welcome to another nature news. Woo! A lot of important topics today again and awesome topics. This is a good mix of important topics and just epic topics. So normally I start with wildlife, but now in this nature news I'm gonna start with climate slash environment because this is very urgent. All right, I need you mammals to sign one petition really quickly. It only takes a few seconds because as I said in the intro, you can help the Amazon rainforest and all the animals and indigenous people that live there. You can help them right now because they need your help. Every single person that signs this petition, it all counts, all right? So in Brazil, of course, Amazon rainforest, there is a new prime minister. Previously, it was Bolsonaro and this new uh, president Lula, I think. So far, he is much more willing to support nature. This is what it says in a petition. We call on you to stop the vote on bill, holding up a bunch of numbers, in the Senate. Which will gut the government's power to guard the rainforest, strip the rights of hundreds of indigenous communities to their land, and roll back nearly 30 years of progress in protecting the Amazon and key biomes. This unconstitutional attack on the rights of indigenous people must be rejected. We also demand that you immediately stop all attempts to undermine the indigenous people's ministry and the environment. Ministry of Brazil. Without them, there is no future for Brazil, its people and wildlife. That's what I added. Oh, of course, you can't forget about the wildlife. Obviously, I already signed this petition weeks ago, so I urge you to please, mammals, mammals, sign this petition real quick. As I said, it only takes a few seconds and it makes a big difference, okay? If you wanna do something useful today, this is it, this is your opportunity, all right? Two nature news videos ago, I also talked about the Amazon rainforest because there was a 60% decrease that month in August from the previous year. The good news is deforestation in the Amazon rainforest has decreased. Okay, and I quote, deforestation in the Amazon rainforest decreased by 66.11% in August to its lowest level for the month since 2018. It was a 60% decrease in deforestation in the Amazon rainforest. But I said then, okay, this is good, but this is only good if we keep going like this, if we keep dropping that number in terms of deforestation. And I also said, it's only a matter of time before something bad will happen again. And look what's happening right now. This is exactly what I meant. Here's another problem. Illegal law of just not illegal. That's the whole problem. Logging will be legal and deforestation will be legal again if we don't, you know, get this petition through. This is exactly the reason why we need to keep going. Even after a big victory, yes, it's nice, but we need to keep going. But because that big victory can be reversed at any moment. It's win, lose, win, lose. And in the end, we will stay neutral. We have to keep going and winning every time, okay? Because as we see here, in every shadow of every achievement, there's new darkness waiting to just happen. New, new danger, a new problem is just waiting to strike. A couple weeks ago, I said, okay, hey, nice, 60% decrease in deforestation. And now, boom, new problems with deforestation. Please sign a petition. Join us on the good side of history, okay? This is another step towards making the planet green again. So, the choice is ours. Are we gonna let those people down, those animals in the beautiful parts of Amazon rainforest? Or are we gonna stand up and just sign this petition? That's the least that we can do. And are we gonna keep fighting, keep protecting our beautiful world, the place, all these amazing places that we not only love, we need, okay? These places are so absolutely important. The biodiversity, all the beautiful ecosystems, and these dumbass fuckers are just destroying this world, our world, right in front of our eyes. The 
competition is in the description. Only takes a few seconds. All right, fam and us mammals, let's move on quickly to the next topic. Now, we're gonna move on to wildlife. By the way, if you are new here and you are a real nature freak, I invite you to join us on our mission to make the planet green again. If that sounds like you, attack that subscribe button like a wild animal and become part of this amazing and important journey. This is about evolution. Evolution is one of the most crazy, complex, and in my opinion, fascinating topics to talk about. So when you talk about evolution, you talk about Charles Darwin, the great iconic Charles Darwin, always thought that evolution is a constant process that changes animals and that is responsible for the adaptations of animals for survival. A lot of fossils nowadays show that there are quite a lot of species that haven't changed for millions of years. Is it completely true? Is evolution only driven by survival or are there multiple factors that have an influence on evolution? That's what we're gonna answer right here. The question here is how can evolution be both fast and slow at the same time? To answer that we need to know how evolution works. What drives evolution? What is the reason for evolution? Are there multiple reasons or is it just like Charles Darwin always thought? Is it only for survival? A new study has found that evolution is not always driven by natural selection. What is natural selection? A most iconic way to describe this is of course the giraffe with the long neck. The longer the neck, the more leaves he can reach, the more likely he is to survive. Natural selection is it has all everything to do with surviving. The better a species, an animal is adapted to their environment, the more likely he is or she is to survive. Natural selection has everything to do with adaptations to survive. That's natural selection. A new study has found that it is not always driven by natural selection, but also random fluctuations in traits and survival. So they did a study with four lizards from Florida. To understand animals, we need to know these animals. We need to go into the absolute details. And that is what they did here. They measured everything. The lizard's head, feet, the legs, the weight obviously, and even the stickiness of their paws. Well, paws, their toes, the stickiness of their toes. And they documented the exact branch or stump that they found these lizards on. And of course, they released them back on the exact same branch that they found them. They thought lizards with bigger heads would have had an advantage in eating larger prey. Or that lizards with stickier toes would have been able to cling on to serve more easily and that would give them an advantage but they found that natural selection was often weak or absent this means that there was no clear connection between certain traits and survival it's not really about survival here so the real discovery here is it is not necessary always about survival Charles Darwin was right but not fully it's not yeah 100% every single time about only survival which many people including me have always believed was the only true thing that causes evolution. They also found that evolutionary adaptations were changing in different time periods. So obviously time has also an influence on evolution. The team concluded that natural selection was not the only factor influencing evolution in these lizards. They suggested that random fluctuations in traits and survival, also known as genetic drift, were also important. Genetic drift occurs when some individuals survive or reproduce more than others by chance, not because they have better traits. This can cause traits to change over time without any adaptive advantage. The study shows that evolution can be both fast and slow depending on the balance between natural selection and genetic drift. When natural selection is strong and consistent, evolution can be fast and adaptive. When natural selection is weak or fluctuating, evolution can be slow and random. This may explain why some species appear unchanged for millions of years, despite environmental changes. Here are a couple of examples of species that haven't changed for millions of years. First, we've got the horseshoe crab. A very iconic animal, one of the earliest animals. They have barely changed for 400 million years. Then the goblin shark, a crazy looking shark, has barely changed for 120 million years. And then the last example, the lungfish, has barely changed for 380 million years. Evolution, man, this is epic because evolution is such an interesting thing. Evolution has no end goal. No goal, no end goal, no end form. And it's a never ending cycle of a changing world. It's the dynamics of life. I almost wanna say the evolution is life because life is about changing, adapting, surviving, enduring, and ultimately evolving. Mammals. Mammals? Okay, vamanos mammals to the last topic. It is time to go prehistoric. The first topic of the two is there is an epic 
amazing groundbreaking new nature documentary series out on Netflix a few days ago. I have started watching it. It is crazy beyond comprehension. It is live on our planet. Check it out right now. I'll leave the trailer in the description. It is on Netflix. I mean, who doesn't have Netflix? This is epic, you know. You have to watch it. This is one of the best nature documentaries that will ever exist. I already know it. This set has far exceeded my expectations. Highly educational. I, I don't know. What more can I say? Check out life on our planet. Do yourself a favor, man. This is... Woo! The last topic. This is about the legendary Spinosaurus. We all know Spinosaurus. Most of us know Spinosaurus. From the Jurassic, the third movie. Is it the third movie or the second? No, the there's quite some debate going on about Spinosaurus, how Spinosaurus live, what did Spinosaurus really look like, because the image of Spinosaurus keeps changing, we keep discovering new things about Spinosaurus, but what did Spinosaurus really look like and how aquatic was Spinosaurus really, and then of course, what was the giant seal on his back for, what was the true purpose of that enormous thing, they first discovered Spinosaurus in Egypt in 1950, that is why they came up with the name Spinosaurus Egypticus. But they didn't see the full picture of Spinosaurus yet. They barely have, had discovered anything yet. They didn't know yet that Spinosaurus was actually a really aquatic animal. And over the years the image of Spinosaurus kept changing and changing. As we discovered more and more things about Spinosaurus, scientists and paleontologists discovered that Spinosaurus was actually a really aquatic predator. And they also discovered that Spinosaurus was the biggest land predator that has ever lived. Bigger than T-Rex. Bigger than the Lizard King. They discovered that the whole body of Spinosaurus looked quite different than they first thought. We now have discovered a lot of adaptations and features of their bodies. The tail, a paddle-like tail, a snout like a crocodile, even the teeth are very pointed. A giant sail on their back, the most iconic thing about Spinosaurus probably. And then they also found fossilized stomach contains of sea creatures and fish. Fish are sea creatures, what am I saying? They found aquatic animals as prey in their stomachs. All this evidence, the body, the behavior, all that combined, we now know Spinosaurus was a really aquatic predator. And that is exactly one of the very interesting things about Spinosaurus, that they live among water all the time. They hunt among the shorelines, among the riverbanks, and eat it mainly fish and very aquatic prey. They ate a lot of fish, but fish, I say fish, not any fish. One of their favorite prey was giant sawfish. These fish were up to, what was it, seven meters long, and they had a long snout with two rows of razor sharp barbs on each side. But of course, that was not a problem for Spinosaurus, because Spinosaurus was really adapted to snatch these animals out of the water. It was no problem for Spinosaurus. But but there's more to Spinosaurus hunting than meets the eye. Because in their nose, just like a crocodile, they had vibration receptors all over their nose. Which they used, just like modern day crocodiles, to sense all the animals in the water. To sense when prey is close enough to grab them out of the water. And by hunting this prey and in this habitat, they avoided a lot of direct competition from other predators. I think that a lot of other predators like, Sp oh, like Spinosaurus, there's not really anyone like Spinosaurus. But for example, Carcaridon. Dontosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex, these predators had a lot more competition, I think, than Spinosaurus. Because what carnivorous dinosaur hunted among the shorelines and eat mainly fish? There were predators, but those were no match for Spinosaurus because they were a lot smaller. I think one of the reasons why Spinosaurus was so epic and amazing and maybe also why they could grow so big. So now, with all these new discoveries, we know so much more about Spinosaurus, how they lived, what they looked like and what were all the adaptations. On their body. I think they also probably had webbed feet. Guaranteed webbed feet because they were really really effective swimmers as well. All those Spinosaurus could swim really well. Will the well? What am I saying? Scientists, researchers and paleontologists do not actually believe all the evidence points towards this. Spinosaurus was very aquatic, yes they could also swim really well but Spinosaurus most probably did not hunt while swimming. They could swim yes but not really effectively under the water like a real crocodile. That is where, where the line is drawn right now. Another thing that comes to my attention is that a lot of people seem to think that certain adaptations of animals, for example like the sail on the back of Spinosaurus, that they only have one true purpose, one reason. And I think you limit your own thoughts by doing that. So many times the first question is why? 
why does this animal have this adaptation? Why does Spinosaurus have this seal? I think a lot of people tend to only seek one answer, but I rather look at what are all the benefits of this adaptation, not, it, not what is the one true purpose. Are there are multiple ways this animal benefits from this adaptation, and usually there are multiple benefits from one specific adaptation. This is a very iconic one, for example, the mane of a lion. A lot of the researchers are trying to answer one question. Oh, it is for protecting their neck. No, 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 it's not for protecting their neck. It's only to attract a mate. I look at, okay, how does the lion, a male lion benefit from this mane? A male lion benefits from having a mane in at least three ways. The first one is, of course, it does protect his neck in a fight. The second one is, it attracts a mate. The bigger, the fuller, and the darker the mane, the more testosterone that male lion has the more strength, more power, the more attractive to a female, the more chance to reproduce. And then the third one is, obviously it is a sign of health and strength and power, so it warns off a rival, a rival male lion that invades his territory. So there you go, there are already three benefits of having a male and not just one. So the next time you see a specific adaptation, don't limit yourself by only thinking of one, one reason. No, I always think, okay, what are all the benefits? And the same is for Spinosaurus. Probably. The first one, the seal probably helps to cut through the water. If Spinosaurus was swimming, it would have been a little bit more efficient. Then the second one, it makes Spinosaurus look a lot bigger than Spinosaurus really was. So it wants of other dinosaurs. The bigger, the more intimidating, the less likely you will get into a fight. The more space you have to yourself. As a big ass Spinosaurus with a giant seal on his back. And then the third one could be that the seal Spinosaurus could have been brightly colored. Maybe this is just a theory. That's actually what they have discovered. The neck frill of Triceratops was actually colored. The surfaces of the frills are very heavily grooved. These grooves probably carried nerves and blood vessels that would have supplied the skin growing over those frills. This may have been very brightly colored, a big surface area for the animal to show off to potential mates. And even the head of Pachycephalosaurus was also brightly colored. So why not the seal of a Spinosaurus? This could have been used to uh, obviously attract a mate. So there are, again, you have already three benefits of having a giant seal like that. And not just one. Of course, it's just a theory, but if you look into nature, you will find that a lot of animal and even plant adaptations have more than one purpose. All right, mammals, that is it for this nature news. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed it Woo! i hope you got value out of this i'm just gonna remind you once again please mammals we need you to sign a petition and check out life on our planet on netflix in the description you can't miss this i want to thank you for watching stay tuned one new nature news every week if you want some more short fast quick content about wildlife and nature check out wild facts i'll leave the playlist of my wild facts in the description okay i gotta say what i always say let's make the planet green again and i'm gonna see you in the next video let's go Wild!